So, the final Sick Doctor story that I had to review, and I know I've done this ad border, but whatever, is the fifth serial of the 22nd season, Time Lash, which was first broadcast in two 45-minute parts from the 9th to the 16th of March, 1985. And... I'd heard this was one of Colin Baker's weakest stories. I'd seen so many people rank this as one of their least favourites, and people saying it's one of the worst stories of classic Who. And upon having watched it through, I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised I'm not more disappointed. I mean, okay, it's not the strongest of Colin Baker's efforts, but I don't think it's the weakest either. And I actually thought it was pretty decent by all standards. Anyway, the sick doctor, played by Colin Baker, and his companion Paddy Brown, played by Nicola Bryant, end up getting caught in a time corridor while travelling in the TARDIS. They eventually manage to escape it, and they escape to the planet of Carfell, where the signal came from. Now, this is a planet that has supposedly been visited by the doctor before, and they reveal that it was pre previously visited by the third doctor and Joe Grant. Now, Apparently this wasn't a, a thing shown on screen, so I don't know if uh, this particular adventure, previous adventure they had on Carfell has been shown in Big Finish or in the comics or whatever, but supposedly they, the third Doctor and Joe Grant visited Carfell before, and the Doctor finds it's currently under the kind of rule of the new Malin named Tekka, played by Paul Darrow who, as a family member pointed out to me, was previously an actor from Blake 7 at, at the time in the 1980s. Huh. Anyway, as I said, they encounter several different characters in there, including Tekka, a woman named Vina, played by Janine Crowley, who's uh, who tried nicking a vital piece of equipment and going back through time, a include and two other people, including Mirkos, who's another resident of Carfell, and f two freedom fighters named Katz and Saison, played by Tracy Louise Ward and Dick Dick and Ashworth. And the main piece of punishment tech that they have on Carfell is something called the Time Lash. The Time Lash is seemingly a portal that anyone that they send through it gets sent going back through time and through the time vortex. So I don't know if they necessarily die or whether they're just sent back into the past to live to death, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, the planet is also under the rule, not just of Tekka, but of a creature known as the Borad, played by Robert Ashby. And I'd heard so many people think this is one of the worst stories ever and that the Borad is a rubbish creature, but honestly I thought the Borad was an effective villain. I mean, I will admit it's not the strongest Doctor monster, but I thought, I thought it was alright. I mean, yeah. Uh, but they also find, when the Doctor has to go back in the TARDIS to retrieve Vina, who had gone into the Time Lash. He finds her in 1885, where she had been looked after by a man named Herbert, played by David Chandler. And Herbert, I'll admit, I only really had four small problems with this story, and I really do mean small ones. First of all, the effects they used for when they showed the TARDIS out of control and the time corridor, I felt was very 1980s. It's like something you'd see on a 1980s screensaver. But considering this was 1985, I can kind of give it a pass for that. The second thing that I will bo I will admit was a little cheesy was the Borad's method of killing people. I, anyone who faced the Borad got shot down with a kind of ray gun that, from an audience perspective at least, turned the victims into a plastic mannequin that then fell to the floor. I don't know if this is supposed to be a, a really kind of horrific way of person dying, but or whether it would have been better to just show skeleton, but I will admit, the Borad's method of killing people I just thought was a bit overly cheesy. The third thing was a creature called the Morlock. The Morlock is ultimately explained as why the Borad looks the way it does, i.e. it got was involved in a kind of accident or an experiment uh, with the, a human or a humanoid and the Borad and, and the Morlock and it ultimately became the Borad, which was a great thing. 
And I will admit the puppetry on the Morlock was a little dodgy. That's all I'm going to say on that. And the only other thing was that I did find the character of Herbert a little annoying, a little grating. I mean, it wasn't necessarily David Chandler's fault, but he was just going off what the directors and the writers said. But I will admit the character did get a little annoying. I He asks when the doc says to take Vina back to Carfell, uh, Herbert asks if he can come along, he can tag along, to which the Doctor says no. He's like, oh, okay, I'll stay here, and then sneaks aboard the TARDIS, to which he spends pretty much the entire story going, oh, do you mind if I tag along? And the Doctor's like, no, but then he just does it anyway. But I will admit there was one thing I did like about Herbert, and um, anyway, I'll mention that at the end, because it does come at the very end of the story. The other thing that I thought first that they did actually manage to fix was... I felt the Borad's defeat at first was a little abrupt. I, the Doctor is able to outwit the Borad and seemingly defeats him. And I looked at the time and I was like, there's still 15 minutes of the episode left. I'm like, oh, that's weird. I mean, the, the rest of the story is pretty much them trying to stop another race who's fired a missile at their planet. But then when the Borad seemingly returned and captured Perry, I was like, oh, okay. Okay, they're not done with him yet. And I felt the way they defeated him using his own self-loathing and mirrors, I thought was pretty effective. But I was glad they brought him. He wasn't defeated on the first go-round. He did require more. Anyway, at the very end of the story, uh, the Doctor and Perry are saying goodbye to everyone, and they say they've got to take Herbert back home. And Herbert asks if he can just stick around on Carfell for a little while, to which Perry seems a little hesitant, but then the Doctor says, no, I'll probably be fine. We'll, we'll take him back eventually, but... You'll probably want to stay for a bit. And she's like, why are you being so blasé about it? He went, well, this fell out of his pocket. Brings out a card revealing Herbert's full name. Herbert George Wells. I-H-G Wells. And like, he will eventually go back to Earth and he will tell everyone what he's, what he saw here. But, yeah, I think history will be all right. Which I do, I do like that. It's a nice little twist, a nice little bow. I will admit it doesn't necessarily make up for Herbert being rather annoying throughout most of the story. But, you know what, it, it, it was fine. So after hearing so many things about Time Lash being one of the worst stories, I will admit it's not one of the stronger ones, but I think it gets a lot more hate than it deserves. Anyway, with that being said, having now reviewed, seen and reviewed each uh, classic story for The Sixth Doctor, I think instead of doing a season ranking this time, I'm just going to rank every single story of Colin Baker's tenure as the Doctor. Anyway, my ranking would go, of the 11 stories, my bottom would probably go to his first story, The Twin Dilemma. I mean, it's, it's not terrible, but I do think the villain was a little overly comical, and yeah, I, it's his first story, so he had more things to come. My number 10 would probably go to The Two Doctors. I know a lot of people are going to like this one, but looking back, I think it's definitely one of the weaker multi-Doctor stories. And I will admit, the stuff with the Doctor being turned into a creature the same as Shockeye, and the two of them going around being monstrous together, it kind of pulled it down. My number nine would go to the first part of the Trial of a Time Lord arc, The Mysterious Planet. It's, I think, the weakest story of the entire Trial of a Time Lord arc, but then again, it's the first one. It's just a little dull in places, but anyway. My number eight would be Time Lash, which I have just described. Uh, number seven, I would go to Trial of a Time Lord Terror of the Vervoids. I mean, it, it's better than The Mysterious Planet. Not quite as good as the previous entry, but yeah. Tri Trial of a Time Lord The Ultimate Foe, i.e. the final part, comes in at my number six, which I do think they had a good use of the Valyard and the Master in this story, as well as a good appearance by Sabalon Glitz, played by Tony Selby. My number five would go to The Mark of the Rani, which I dithered with this one between this, uh, whether The Mark of the Rani was better or worse than The Ultimate Foe, and I ultimately decided it was better. I don't necessarily think it's the strongest story, but it had a good villain with the Rani. Anyway, my number four would go to Revelation of the Daleks. I think this one is possibly my personal favourite of... One of my favourite stories of 
Colin Baker's run, but yeah, it ranks at number four here. Number three goes to Trial of a Time Lord Mind Warp, which I felt was actually a brilliant serial. I mean, I think that one mainly got brought up because of Brian Blessed. I mean, I feel he loved it in the story, and that's what dragged that one up for me. My number two would go to Attack of the Cybermen, uh, his second story, and a pretty good Cyberman story. I, I don't necessarily think it's the strongest Cyberman story overall, but then again, that's just me. And my number one best sick Doctor story would probably go to Vengeance on Varos. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say it was the best, and after viewing it through, yeah, I think it was. Vengeance on Varos, that's my number one. So there you go, there's my quick little review of Time Lash and my ranking of the Sick Doctor's entire tenure. Anyway, what will be my next classic Doctor Who story that I review? Well, I've got one in the works. It'll be a little while before it does arrive, but there you go. My review, I'm done with the Sick Doctor. And to be honest, I'm a little... I never thought the Sick Doctor would be the Doctor that I ended up finishing first. I mean, he was the one that I probably had a lot of trouble getting into, purely because he didn't have a regeneration story. Or I just found it very difficult to know where to begin with him. But he's the first Doctor that I've actually watched, first classic Doctor that I've actually watched all of. And you know what? I don't think Colin Baker deserves so much hate. I mean, okay, he's not the strongest Doctor, but he had a lot of good stuff. And there you go. Time Lash, my review of the Sixth Doctor's tenure, and you know what? He did, he did good. Anyway, till next time, see ya.